Okay, so now that you have seen the product rule in action with different variations of, of, of functions where they're multiplying, let's look at an exam question. So f of x is defined as, in the bracket, we have x squared plus 1 multiplied by the, by the ln function. So the left function, the left side of the function, let's call that u, and the right side, which is the ln x, let's call this one v. Okay, so we need to now find the derivative of the function f of x, what's uh, so the f dash of x, uh, what that means, at the point where x equals to e. Now, e is a constant. It's a constant that starts off with 2.71. Uh, it's actually an irrational number where the decimals just uh, go on forever. Uh, there's no pattern in the decimals. But it's not really important here. Main thing is here, we need to leave the final answer in terms of E. Okay, so let's begin by the formula for F dash of X or dy dx is equal to U dash V plus U V dash. So we have U as X squared plus 1 u dash is therefore going to be 2x, v equals to ln x, and we saw in the previous uh, examples that if you differentiate ln x, uh, you get 1 over x. So therefore, the f dash of x is u dash times v, so u dash times v, so we have 2x ln x plus u v dash, so u times v dash. So when you're multiplying more than one term, always use brackets. So here we have bracket x squared plus 1 multiplied by 1 over x. Okay, now you may be tempted to expand the bracket here, but I would suggest, you know, just leave it as it is for now. When we do the substitution of x equals e, then we may look at how to, we can tidy this expression, expression up. So this is basically our f dash of x. Now we need to substitute. So the next step is to substitute for x where x equals e. So if we do this, in other words, f dash where x equals e equals to 2 times e times ln of e plus, in the bracket, we have e squared plus 1. When you, move, uh, when you multiply by 1 over x, that's the same as dividing the whole thing by x, but x obviously is going to be our e. Well, let's look at this expression. Now, when we have ln e, ln and e cancel out because ln was, is defined as the log of to base e. So if you log to base E of the same base, they cancel out and they just leave you with the number 1. So this just becomes 2E plus E squared plus 1 over E. We do have the answer in terms of E, but I want to do a bit extra here. I want to tidy this expression up. Uh, in other types of exam questions, they will ask you to either give it the answer in a special form, or it might say, write this as a single fraction. So we have here we have like two terms, we want to write it as a, a single term. To do that, we need the same denominator in order to combine the two terms here. So if I was to, well, we know that this expression here is always out of one. So to, if I multiply the denominator by e, numerator has to get multiplied by e, in which case we now have 2e squared plus e squared plus one, all over the same denominator, e, uh, that just simplifies to 3e squared plus 1 all over e. And we have an expression for the gradient entirely in terms of e. Here it says leave the answer in terms of e. Sometimes in exam, they use the word exact form. You might say leave the answer in exact form. All that means basically is, is if you have e's in your expression, leave the e's there. Or if you have pi's in your expression or square roots of a number, leave them in a third form or in terms of pi. Do not go into decimals. That's where you will lose mark because the answer cannot be put back into an exact form. Okay, one final exam question on the use of the product rule. So here we have y defined as x to the power of half times e to the minus 2x. Here's the graph of this, uh, of this function and we can see that the graph has one maximum point and it's labelled m. So the question says find the x coordinate of the maximum point m which is here. Uh, in other words, we, all we need to work out is this x value here that turns this function into the, its maximum or give this function its maximum value. Now, to begin, the maximum point is a stationary point. The criteria to be a stationary point is that dy by dx, which is the gradient, must be equal to, uh, I can hear you saying it aloud, 
has to be equal to zero, okay? So in other words, we have to differentiate this and make it equal to zero, and then that will give us an equation to solve, and we can solve that equation to find what this e is. Oh, uh, sorry, what this x is. Uh, so start with dy by dx. Again, put out rule u dash v plus u v dash. So this is our u and this is our v. Now, due to space, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be doing the u's and v separately. We're just going to do it in our heads. So by now, we should have enough practice to do this. So here, that's our u. So if you do u dash here, that gives you a half x to the power of power one less. So it'll be minus a half. That's basically the u being differentiated. That's a u dash times by v. That's e to the minus two x plus. Now leave the u as it is, which is x to the power of a half. And then you multiply by v dash. So if we differentiate this exponential, you get, or we differentiate the e, you get e to the power minus 2x. And then the minus 2x differentiates into minus 2. So that's the second part. Uh, you may need to want to tidy this up a little bit. But before we do that, don't forget that we want the gradient to be equal to, to 0. Uh, which means, uh, let's for, for simplify this a little bit, um, we have a half x to the minus a half e to the minus 2x minus x to the power of a half, so minus 2x power half e to the minus 2x is equal to 0. We need to solve this equation. Um, what's common in the two terms we have is that they both have the same exponential uh, factor. So let's factorize out this exponential e to the minus 2x. And uh, we are left with a half x to the power of minus a half subtract 2x to the power half, close bracket, equals to 0. Now we have two factors uh, multiplying to be 0, so one of them must be 0. But we, we know that an exponential, e to the minus 2x, can never be equal to 0. So the only way this will be 0 if this everything in the bracket is equal to 0. So this implies that a half x to the power minus a half minus 2x to the power a half must be equal to 0. So we need to be solving this equation in order to find our x value. All right, let's continue here. We need to simplify this equation a little bit. I don't like fractions in my, in my equation, so I'm gonna multiply everything by two uh, to get rid of this uh, half here. So this will be, uh, so if you multiply every, both sides by two, uh, so that we get x to the power of a, so x to the power minus half, minus four x to the power of a half, and zero times two is still going to be zero. And if you just rearrange this, so take the minus four to the other side, and we get minus four x to the power of half equals to uh, x to the minus half is the same as one over x to the power of a half. Or and from before, from our GCSE knowledge, we know that a power half means the same as the square root. So bring that to to this side and multiply. So four times where x to the power of half times x to the power of half is going to give you x to the power of one equals to 1, therefore x is equal to a quarter, and we have the x coordinate of our maximum point m. Right, hopefully you have enjoyed this lesson and picked up um, any new skills, or if not, hopefully it helped you to revise the product rule. I will be doing the uh, quotient rule for differentiation in my next video, uh, so hopefully uh, you'll come back and watch that as well. I'll see you in the next video.